Hello, GED students. Let's look at some more substitution applications. Problem says the square roots of negative numbers are undefined in the real numbers. Okay, I'm just being kind to you to give you a definition of what I'm saying about undefined values. So the square roots of negative numbers are undefined. Basically what I'm saying by that is I can't take the square root of a negative number and have an answer that's real. Later on in math, you'll learn how to do imaginary numbers, no joke. But for now, we're only dealing with real numbers. And so we would say that is undefined. It has no answer. That's basically what we're saying there. Now, which values of y would make the expression undefined. So I am have a y in this expression and I'm asking which of these numbers, if I plug them in, substitute, will give me an expression that's undefined, something basically that's asking me to take the square root of a negative. All right, well, I don't know until I check. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some guessing and checking. So let's start with this original expression here, 7 minus 3y, all of that under a square root symbol, and let's plug in the values that we know. So we're going to take the square root of 7 minus 3, and I'm not going to write y anymore. I'm going to write a value for y. Let's try 7 first. And that's all I'm saying with those numbers separated by commas, that there's more than one answer. Okay, guys, 7 comma negative 3 means 7 and negative 3 would both be answers to this problem. All right. And notice I did plug that 7 in using parentheses because the 3 and the y are shoved together. They're multiplying. And now we're going to simplify. And guys, I am going to simplify this by hand, considering that if this subject came up, it'd be very likely in the non-calculator section. So we work math inside to outside, right? We do the inside of groupings first. So let's head inside that square root symbol before we deal with the square root itself. So I'll just copy down the square root. Looking inside, I see two operations, the subtraction and the multiplication. Well, according to order of ops, we do multiplication first. So I'm going to do that 3 times 7, and that's 21. I haven't dealt with that first 7. I haven't dealt with that minus yet. And now we are going to do this math. If I have only $7 and I go and spend $21, I am in debt. Now, really doesn't matter how much I'm in debt. I'll tell you I'm in debt 14. However, just the fact that I'm in debt and now my next step would be, say, take the square root of a negative number. Yeah, when I plug in 7, this gives me an undefined expression. And once again, when I say it's an undefined expression, I'm saying it doesn't make sense in this number system, all right? Square root of a negative doesn't make sense. It doesn't give you a real answer as you guys think of it. And so we call it undefined. Uh, and so what did I just learn? I learned that seven works, makes this sucker undefined. I'm guessing negative 7 probably doesn't work. Let's just do a real quick check because you know how they are. If they have 7s and negative 7s, usually one works and the other doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my 7 minus 3y, and let's see what happens if I plug in instead of 7, negative 7. So my square root will remain the same, my 7, my minus, my 3. But this time I'm plugging in negative 7. And kind of wanted to do this one because negatives are really common student error. So again, I have to do my multiplication first. And you might say to me, Kate, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. So I end up with the exact same thing, 7 minus 21. And I would say, watch your negative signs. Watch your subtraction. That's not what this says. So if I have 3 times negative 7, you're right that this would give me negative 21. But this is why I always talk about y'all's secretarial skills. That negative 21 is from the 3 times negative 7. I still have this minus up here. And you might say to me, Kate, that looks gross. What it, two minuses in a row? And that's why we'll often use parentheses there. Not to say multiply, but to say there's a difference here. One is a subtract and one is a negative. So that is 7 minus negative 21. Now, of course, Subtracting a negative 
The easiest way to do that is to rewrite this as an actual addition expression. Subtracting a negative or taking away a charge, the way I think of it, will actually end up adding, making your account, in that case, if you were taking away a charge, go up. And so I'm going to turn that into a plus. And then 7 plus 21 is 28. And we have the square root of 28. And you might say, Kate, I don't know what the square root of 28 is. And I say, you don't have to know what it is to know that it's a real answer. We can take the square root of a positive number. We'd want a calculator to do it. But the point here is, is it undefined? No, 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 no. There's an answer for it. And I might not know what it is, but it exists. And so negative seven would not make these expressions undefined. So go ahead and rule those two suckers out. Um, and can I just take a second to show you kind of the lazy shortcut method that I would have gone here if I was dealing with this negative symbol. So one way to deal with this sucker here is the positive three times negative seven. But if you did algebra with me, you know that one thing I like to do is when I multiply, just think of that like a negative. Yes, when I'm adding, subtracting, it's a minus, but when I'm multiplying, it's a negative. And so the easier way to me to do this, or to me to do this, is negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21. And I have 7 plus positive 21 under the square root symbol. And now it's quicker, easier, less chance of error to see that I would end up with a positive number. So either way you think about it, you'll get to the same place. And either way you think about it, 7 is still not, or negative seven is still not going to make this expression undefined. All right, so we've ruled out both the guys with negative sevens. We like seven. What's the difference between these other two answers, three and negative three? Let's do the negative three first because that's the one where you guys usually make the most errors. Anytime there's negatives involved, you guys tend to make more errors. So Plugging that guy in, I'm still going to have a square root. I'm still going to have a 7, a minus, a 3. But now I'm going to replace that y with this possible <clears throat> value, negative 3, and see what happens. Does it give me an undefined expression? According to the operation, order of operations, we're going to do multiplication first. And I'm going to do it my lazy way, okay, you guys? When I'm multiplying, I'm going to think of both of those like negatives. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, 2 negatives cancel each other out when multiplying or dividing when multiplying or dividing and of course i have the square root now and i still have that seven and now i don't have to drop the minus because i did use it i used it when i multiplied a negative times a negative is a positive and then seven plus nine is 16 squared is 16. now you can say kate i know what the square root of 16 is it's four good for you that's and four is a real number uh, but I didn't have to do that in order to know. I could have stopped right here because I say, hey, I can take the square root of a positive. It has a real answer. It has an answer. And so that would not make this expression undefined. So it cannot be A. It must be D. How like me that it's the final answer. <laughs> you guys are like, if Kate makes the test, just always choose D. <laughs> she wants just to try all the answers. Okay, let's just confirm, though, that 3 actually does do this one more time so you can see what I mean by an undefined expression. So starting with the square root of 7 minus 3y, I am going to now plug in the value 3 to see what happens. So I get square root of 7 minus 3 times this time 3. Following the order of operations, I'm going to multiply or divide first. So 3 times 3 is 9, and I get minus 9. Or, of course, we can also think negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Same difference. My 7 drops. My square root drops. And then 7 minus 9. I only have $7. I go and spend $9. Oh, I'm going to spend my all my 7 and then 2 more. So I'm going to end up $2.00 in the hole. And I can see that I do end up trying to take the square root of a negative number. Can't do it in the real numbers, not without imaginary numbers anyway. But we only care about real numbers on the GED. So this sucker is undefined in the real numbers. It doesn't make any sense in the real numbers. And so, whew, it was D. Nice. Tricky, tricky. So again, I always think of these 
non-calculator section type questions as as extra credit kind of a thing. It's not the end of the world if you don't know this. I know it's a little tricky, but uh, being equipped to do it with this lovely skill of substitution makes us think of it like an extra credit bonus point. <laughs> All right, you guys. Super proud of you. I know this one tends to uh, confuse students, and I'm super proud of you for tracking. Happy learning.